This episode is about how Zach was hired by Tony Robbins, uh, was trained by Tony Robbins, how he was committing crime, and Tony Robbins found out about it and actually personally called Zach and fired him. And it is the most motivational firing of any firing ever because, you know, Tony Robbins is uh, awesome. So check this out. All right, so that led to the events led to me doing a lot of traveling. Doing a lot of traveling led to Delta had the upgrades because I was in the 10,000. I was doing a 10,000 or 100,000 miles in a year. So now I was of able course. to actually fly in first class. Of course. You know, which like I've a, never flown in first class. Oh, my. God, yes. A big difference. So when that happened, I'm kind of like, what in the world? Have I been exposed to? Like, I can't, I can't go back to coach oh, with, no, with, no. with, with if, the peasants? If I could get an upgrade. <laughs> Are you if I, serious? If I can't get an upgrade, I don't want to go. But they would give me upgrades ahead of time. Oh, Mr. Such and Such. Anyway, you know, there's a whole story behind that. I never even told you. but So I, I would get automatic up, upgrades to first class. So what that, what that led to is one of the trips I was on, um, I was leaving, and I think— I was I was leaving and um, Anthony Robbins was having a seminar in town. So, by the way, like um, only job I had during this was West. Like I, what I didn't cover is um, I worked at West Telemarketing. Right. That was my only job. And I end up like I had so many people's names. Right. <laughs> I am listening to okay, you. No I'm, problem, listening. No I'm listening. I'm no listening. I'm sorry. It's, it's worked. And then I, I forget that I could be talking to the camera and talking to those people. Yeah, I'm not important. I've heard <laughs> this. <laughs> All right. So I, at some point I had so many people's names, right, that um, I, I quit. I think I bought a bulk of tapes. I don't I, need you guys anymore. <laughs> but that was the, o- the only reason I ever, like, like and, and I forgot this. I, I quit everything else. Like, I didn't need any other jobs. So I only went there because I needed to gather names. So now it became imperative that I be on there. And then I realized that I started turning in like like I, I, my focus was altering the, the tapes. So I took a, uh, uh, another job in the quality assurance department nice. so that I can get to the tapes and then not be mine. So in the quality assurance, and then I realized, you know, they kept tapes forever. Right. So I'm like, oh. Cool. So I just stole racks of other people, you know. So I'm I've, I've got me a, 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 a vault of tapes, like With when people, I looked people talking to customers and they're giving them all their information right. over the phone. Here's my name. Here's my date of birth. Social and then at number. that time, credit bureaus were very lax. All I had to do was one application, like put in an application at a different address, and they would update the address in the in the file. And like, there's no notification. No, so like there's, there's none these of people that. Aren't, this, is, this is all. This is the '90s. This is Pre ID theft, so it, it's <sighs> good times. So, yeah, good. Time. <laughs> Very easy. So once I discovered that, I'm like, I don't need this job anymore. I've like I went through because different people working for suckers. Yes, <laughs> I went through and there's there's I had over 300 different people's credit files on the tape to the point where like during one of my arrests when they searched my house. Right. And it took me to jail when I came back. Like everything's gone but the tapes. You know? It's like, cool. <laughs> like, we're going to take everything you stole that can ID, I connect you to those people. OK, except for the one thing that connects you to those people. <laughs> so, nice. All thank, right. Thank so, God for cops. Yeah. Thank God. So I realized I quit the job. And um, I moved to Atlanta. So like living like I'm like, what's the purpose of living in Texas anymore? So I moved to Hotlanta just because I think I met somebody. It, it's, a, it's a lot to transpire. And so I met someone. I moved to Atlanta and now I'm living in Atlanta and I'm flying. Anthony Robbins is doing a concert, is doing a, a weekend premiere in Atlanta. OK, so I've read his book, Personal Power. I took the little course and I'm like, oh, I would love to go to that. So I called for tickets and they're like, OK, it's like six thousand dollars. I said six thousand. What? The six is six grand. They go, but think about this: you're going to be spending, you're going to get fifteen quality hours of Anthony Robbins talking to you. I'm like, well, but that's worth me giving you this <laughs> other guy's credit card information. No, I still didn't think it was worth it. So I get on a flight. I don't know where I'm. I'm going somewhere. It's first class, you know. And I'm drinking my champagne and eating my smoked salmon. 
and I'm sitting next to a guy that's <laughs> what what is that noise in the back? <laughs> is that coach? <laughs> Someone close that curtain. <laughs> <laughs> Keep those peasants quiet, please. So I'm, horrible, I'm sitting there and we're talking about Anthony Robbins, and he's like, he goes, dude, I went to one of those seminars. He was a changed sales, my life. That's why I'm sitting in first class. He was a sales rep for Plus, yes, for a company called Plus. It's a credit processing company for Visa and Mastercard, and he said he makes about a quarter of a million a year. I said, what? They're based out of the French Riviera. Did you say, where are you stealing all that money? <laughs> no, no, I have a legitimate job. You mean they pay you? They pay you <laughs> to process credit cards? Me, please. But he was telling me how Anthony Robbins changed his life. I'm like, how the hell did Anthony Robbins change your life? He said, I went to a seminar and I met my boss there at the seminar. So, like, so, so got, Anthony Robbins didn't change it. I just met the guy that would pay yeah, me a quarter exactly, of a million. Exactly. I'm like, okay. that's just a twist of fate. Yeah. He goes, well, ask yourself one question. Who else is paying $6,000 to go see Anthony Robbins? Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so you're meeting a bunch of rich people that are... Motivated. Yes. So I'm like, huh. So I paid the $6,000 to go see Anthony Robbins. So it just so happened he was recruiting for his train-the-trainer project that he had going on so you're there and and anthony robbins is pulling people from the crowd to tr to come work for him right well he's, yeah like he's saying who those that are interested right in in my personal where i'll be training multiple corporations on how to train people right. so how many people was he hiring uh t 12 so he said i need i need 11 11 white guys and a black guy well he needs 10 guys, one female, and one black guy. There you go. Okay. <laughs> and somebody told, that looks he Hispanic. Me, he told me, he goes, he goes, I always felt like I was a token. I was a token. So was the girl. I no. So was the girl. And the girl was hot. I'm talking. Well, he didn't hire you because you're hot. Uh, he surely, well, I became hot. But anyway. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Get him out of here. He, he's smoking. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. So, <clears throat> sorry. Let's get serious. Okay. So, yes. So, he was pulling dynamic people. He wanted to interview them. So, I interview. And you. And me. Plus yeah, you. Yeah, dynamic people and, Plus some, a black guy. and a black guy. <laughs> and a white girl. <laughs> and a white girl. Get me a hot white chick, a black guy, and 10 dynamic people. Uh, and I dare the NAACP to say, shit. <laughs> so, he interviewed me. <laughs> See, okay. And I got the job. So Anthony Robbins himself interviewed you. Well, no, there was a it was it was a like a five tier four right. or five tier interview process. OK, well, it took about four months, you know, and then Anthony Robbins himself called and said, congratulations, you've been hired. You're like, no. So we well, I went to his Fiji house twice where they had training. And he's like, this is blah, 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 opportunity of a lifetime. This is what you're going to be covering. Multiple companies. I'm paying you. Like it was like over ten grand per month. It's like a hundred thousand dollar a year job. He's with like a giant, right? Yes, he's, he's huge. He's like six six. Fuck. Huge, full of energy, smiling all the time, and the most upbeat, positive person ever. I mean, he knows exactly what to say to make you feel. Yeah, well, like, he's six foot six. I'd be fucking thrilled too. <laughs> yeah, my my challenge, my vertically challenged friend. <laughs> so he's a foot taller than me. Yes. Fucker, I hate that fucker. I don't so, even like tall people. <laughs> so I get this job in the midst of me living off of theft. So I'm living off of fraud. Right. And, and you're then still I get, using cards. Yes. And I'm and I get a hundred thousand dollar a year job. So I'm literally stealing my clothes and and I'm I'm stealing money. I'm I'm on a consistent basis of stealing money, right? When I was struggling and working two jobs. And none now, of this has caught up to you. No directly to my mailbox, directly to my mailbox in, in Texas, directly to my mailbox in Georgia. Wow. And I'm multiple people depositing, uh, uh, convenience checks into directly your account. Directly into my account. Did they have it coming? You know that? No, I, like AT&T, AT&T universal card. Like they just have it coming. <laughs> You're just slaxed. I'm, I'm, I'm slamming them. I'm, I'm doing other cards, city banks. Now I'm pulling their credit reports and I'm like, Oh, let me get his, Oh, he doesn't use his city bank. I'll use it. Of 
course. Oh, he's got a thirty thousand dollar um MBNA. I'll never like MBNA was giving like 80, 90 grand in credit. People would never even touch it. It's only right. It's only right. So I was yoke. I'll take this one, this one. And I'm I'm living off and I'm just Alex, blowing. I'll, I'll take a Visa, a MasterCard, and an American Express. <laughs> for for, for yeah. yes. I'm living off of all of that. And then and pocket, dream- pocketing the Anthony Robbins money. Well, the Anthony, my 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 fascination is when I was working two jobs and struggling, I couldn't get a handout for nothing. Couldn't qualify for food stamps, none of that. All right. So then I just live off a of complete fraud, and then I get an Anthony Robbins job worth $100,000, a job I would have never gotten, you know, just in, in the normal thick of things. He was, uh, you had to pay $5,000 to even be possibly introduced to that. So, yeah, I got that job. So I'm stealing clothes from Land's Inn. I've got mono, monogram shirts with my initials on it. On the pocket and everything, I'm wearing flying fucking first, first yes, four or five thousand dollar suits, flying first class all around the world, training people for about a year's time. Well, nice. as you say, after ordering everything directly to my door, it finally caught up to me. No, yes. How that happened? How did they track you down? By, by, <laughs> by, by the way, did you know? Did you know? I, so I talked to you. you know, I was interviewed by a bunch of psychiatrists and stuff, right? And I, so I was also listening. I've been listening to different things on IQ. Right. And I listened to a guy named Jordan Peterson. Do you know who that is? No. He's a professor in, in Canada. And what you know what he was talking He was talking about IQ and like what it means and how they, they use your, the IQ um, tests for different right. things. <laughs> this killed me. But it seemed it, it also made a lot of sense after, you, after having to deal with them. So he was like, you take these aptitude tests and, or, and, and IQ tests, and that like the military wants people that have an IQ between like, they like 80, he goes 80 and 100. And, I, and it was like, why? Because they're okay with doing simple tasks. He said under 80, he goes, and they can't complete the task. Over 100, and they question what you're asking them to do too much. So it's between 80 and 100 is what the, the perfect soldier is because he'll just follow simple orders and won't look too much into it. Right. You, you hire too much, you know, a little too high, and they start going, should we really wipe out the entire village? I mean, is that the right morally thing to do? You know, it's like, <laughs> okay. The, but the guy at 90 will be like, kill them all. Yeah. Um, That's the order. <laughs> right. Law enforcement is between 100. It's like 100 and I think it was like, or was it between 90 and like 110? Because the problems are a little bit more complex. But if there's more than 110, then they overthink it. And you know, like he was explaining the whole thing. And I was like, that makes a lot of sense after dealing with law enforcement. And, de- <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, the average high school student, by the way, has 100 IQ. Right. So I thought, what do COs have? Like, where do CEOs fall? They have to fall in the soldier range, right? Not that I have any problems with, with, with military. God bless the military. Don't, well, well, these don't, are the don't. people that don't qualify, right? The CEOs? No. These are the people who don't qualify for military or police, right? Yeah, well, a lot of the CEOs had been in the You ever notice a lot of yeah. CEOs had been in the military, and they've yes. gone straight to become a CEO because they couldn't qualify for police. to become a police officer. Ah. Right? Because you ever notice that? Like, they like I, they couldn't pass the test. They couldn't qual- pass the psych exam. I love the guy that can't. He can't be a, a police officer, but he can be a CO. So where you have complete control over someone. Yes. So anyway, but I'm sorry. I thought but that they was feel fun. it's regulated. But go ahead. Right. So track, being able to track you down right. was <laughs> the guy that probably was at the top scale at 110. <laughs> well, let's see. I- All of these go to this address. <laughs> What do you think, John? Well, <laughs> I'm thinking we check that address out. <laughs> let, me, let me, let me, clumsily, because I'm going to tell you something. Where I was living in Atlanta, it was a, like a little small apartment complex, right? It was a townhouse complex. And the lady up front and I were very, I think we went to lunch a couple of times. It was an older lady. She was very nice. We talked and I, I brought her lunch and a couple of times, like I, I said, hey, there's a, there was a nice little, um, banquet like a little a little place across the street to eat they had bagels and different things so i said hey let's go over there and grab something to eat at lunchtime I, I, anyway it's, it's all a long story so one day as i come in right she opens the door and she waves me i'm like huh anyway she tells me she goes you know a detective came by here asking 
who lived there. Ooh. And I remember thinking, huh, do you know how, that's how dumb I was? I'm like, eh, probably nothing. <laughs> <laughs> After having all those cars go to my house, yeah. I'm like, eh, I don't see any problem. I'm an upstanding citizen. I work for Tony Robbins. Robin. Exactly. I don't see any problem with that. Meanwhile, I've got eighty, ninety thousand dollars in the bank. Easily could have went to the house, grabbed everything, and not come back. Right. No. I'm like, eh. if it was a problem, he would have probably contacted me or waited. Then three weeks later, they they come barging into the house and like, hey, you're under a friggin' rest. What? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that that shows my stupidity also. So because I got a ample warning. Uh, who lives there? They want to know my name and everything. Yeah, she told me that. She told me that. And instead of me reacting to it, I'm like, eh, just, you know, like my federal arrest. <laughs> so, so you got arrested by the local, by the, uh, what, um, the, who, who arrested? Just the local cops? Yeah, local police officers arrested me for fraud. They searched my Atlanta, house. Atlanta PD? Atlanta PD. The, the feds came in because I was ordering stuff from a company called Land's Inn. Like, my name in Land's Inn is infamous. I ordered from them, like, I probably 25 different people's credit cards. I'm ordering shirts with IKA. So anytime IKA gets ordered, they weren't allowing it. That, that's how much I terrorize them. So they come in, and the FBI just takes my shirts. And they're, they're, telling, they're telling them, <laughs> well, it's... Dumbest thing ever. We're, 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 we're you. Don't belong to you. Yeah. We're sending them back to land in. Yeah, like, so what? They can sell them to other guys <laughs> with the initials. Of- <laughs> My size? Yeah. I'll just order them again. But no. <laughs> Make sure they're marked. So, yeah, the FBI came in and searched the room, and they were kind of like, well, we're not going to pick you up this time. They fingerprinted me and said, well, we're not going to get you this time. Yeah. Well, That's they what they told yeah. me. They haven't, they haven't indicted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they well, didn't it, indict you. They, like, they're just processing the whole thing, but they're, they're going to let that be. It's a small crime. They're going to let the locals handle it. Small, small crime. It had to at least be seven people at that address in Georgia. I'm just Listen, saying, I don't, I don't understand where they get small because what they charged me with was probably like eight. It came up to about $3,300, like where I used the card in that county. That's right. all I got charged with. But, but like I'm saying to myself, that card had $60,000. So I might have used the last three grand to pay for dry cleaning and stuff. Like, what about how'd all those ca- checks? So how'd they calculate? You don't know. You don't know, but you didn't ask. Yeah, you don't look a good yeah, course of mouth. So I'm in, I'm in jail with no bond. So when that happens, my mom drives up from Florida with my sisters and my nieces and nephews because I didn't have a bond. Anyway, long story short, I end up doing six months on that Pedally charge. It took two weeks to get a bond. bond. You don't have a bond. I didn't have a bond. I didn't have a bond for two weeks. I got ninety thousand dollars in the bank. Let me pay off the cards. <laughs> let, let me pay it back. Exactly. No. For anyway, for two weeks I didn't have a bond. Like they're like, we don't know. He's a horrible flight. Anyway, it was it was, it was yeah, ridiculous. I know, yeah, I know. You're an it, it was re, it was a re, they... it was ridiculous. We paid an attorney five thousand dollars, and he got me a like a fifty thousand dollar bond on three thousand dollars worth of card theft. Right. It was it was ridiculous. Anyway, I ended up doing six months county time for that, those charges, right? And so I lost everything in that, that period of time. Well, when I got arrested and bonded out, that's when I told you Anthony Robbins called. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, and, and, so Anthony Robbins finds out that you've, he finds out that you've been, you said you tried to get out. You got out before he, right. so that he, they didn't really miss you. And then well, suddenly. Well, it was two, two, two weeks, yeah. And then suddenly he calls. Yes. Well, he, no, I got, you know what it was? I pled guilty and I had to turn myself in. So once I pled guilty is when he called, but I was missing for two weeks. Like okay. I was ill. And then I noticed you, that you my were ill. Yeah. That's, that was, uh, yeah. yeah, that, and then I noticed my assignments slowed down to where like I used to be gone for, I was gone for two weeks, home for a week, gone for two weeks. That's how it went. I would bounce around. Now I'd be gone to do one training and then I'd come back. Right. And they were flying you. They, they flew you to all like over the a, world. Australia. Yes. Japan. Yeah. You told me what, where like um, Austria, Australia, the UK, um, um, like every England, England, which is the UK, um, Italy right. and Spain. I, I visited about 20 countries, Japan, and I had interpreters, like it's a great it, job. It was yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. It, it, I, I don't. I could spend an hour and a half on that. Yeah, I, I think. I don't know if. I, yes. Yeah. 
It was Too unbelievable. Bad you fucked that up. Go yeah. ahead. Sorry. So anyway, and now I wasn't going out of the country. I just noticed that my workload was a great deal less. Yeah. Like I'm not going to Spain yeah. now. When I got out, my schedule was gone. Now you're just going to go to San Diego and train. Now you're just going to fly, you know, up to, you're going to drive up to Tennessee. You, you know what I'm saying? You're, yes. you're not going as far. You're just going to do these local ones. Yeah. They're right, because you're starting to. They're tapering down. They're still probably trying to figure out what to do with you. Like, right. what do we do? Right, because I, I got. I guess I got the charge. I don't know how they know or what they know, you know. And, and listen, to Anthony Robbins, he's plugged in. He's know? plugged. In. He yeah. might have been, or the, maybe the cops, you know. Because cool. I, I did hear one of them ask me, or I remember like somebody saying something or asking me about it, and I'm like, N- not really. I, I kind of downplayed it, but I think somebody called the company and whatever. So they taper me down. So I plead guilty. I got three weeks to turn myself in. So I'm about to take a six months. Like I'm trying to maintain this job. Yeah. Right. And so he calls me up and he's kind of like gives me the I'm fine. He fired me personally, you know, and he's telling me how, you know, this perfect record that he wanted to maintain, you know, he picked the top. So because I wanted to describe the motivational speech firing. Because it's it, that's a unique quality that Anthony Robbins has. I can fire you motivationally, you know. So you, nice. so the the outline was kind of like you know, everyone dreams has aspirations, you know. My aspiration was to put together a dynamic team that would gel and be together for at least five or ten years. That's going to take over the world when it comes to training and change the face of training and outlook. A very diverse, dynamic team. That's not a goal I was able to reach. And I'm sure your goal, (laughs) you know, was to make a lot of money, get an opportunity to meet a lot of different people from a lot of different companies. Right. So even though we're not going to make that goal, let's talk about what we've accomplished along the way to this point. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, listen, think about you met the leader of the Kodak company. This is someone you trained some of his top people. You did that. There are success stories in every training you've done. This guy is breaking down what I've accomplished. And he's telling me, if you look back at what you've done in this past year working with me, I'm sure there's a thousand opportunities that far exceed this one. I'm going to let you chase those opportunities. I'm doing you a favor. <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to do this favor yes, for you yes, and let you yes. go to chase those opportunities. Yes. And, and so I'm going, but I'm kind of happy where I am. And he's like, well, <laughs> some things my company can't, you know, he's like, there's some things he can't accept. You know what I'm saying? Doesn't mean they're wrong. I just can't accept them. <laughs> so look at this as an opportunity for you to expand what you've got going on and chase dreams that you've created for yourself. I'm going to hang this phone up. I'm not your boss anymore, but God damn it. <laughs> he didn't say dick. He didn't say it. He didn't say it. <laughs> He's like a good Christian or something. Yeah, yeah. He goes, but damn it. Gosh. I know. Gosh, gosh darn, darn it. it. I'm going to see you in a higher position in the next couple of years. Heck yeah. Next time I'm getting 16 years <laughs> instead of just six months. Feds, baby. <laughs> he hung up that phone and I'm like. I'm going to go on to great things. I'm. I'm right after I do this six months in the county. <laughs> God. Matt, that was, when I tell you that was an outstanding firing. <laughs> it felt so good. <sighs> it just went, it took me to heights that you couldn't really. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. But he did it personally. I have to give him credit for that. So, I mean, but yeah, that was the end of that job. You know, I received a um, separation package. Which which is amazingly timed because I think like he called and I think that same day the package showed up. So he's like, hey, hey, get him on the phone before that damn thing shows up. <laughs> but anyway, but um, yeah, I got let go from that job. I did my time. I lost everything. I had money, but I lost everything. So when I got out of my six months, I moved to Florida with my mom to kind of start over. This starts the, the new chapter where I met my Wife now. Nice. <laughs> not wife so we, now. Wife now. No, well, not wife now. Yeah, wife then. Yeah. Your, your ex-wife now. Yeah, yeah. 
Hey, listen, this is one part of a seven part, uh, seven part series that we're doing on Zach and Zach's story. It's probably going to be around three hours long. So if you're not subscribed, you want to make sure you get all the notifications and check out the whole story. Do me a favor, subscribe, hit the, uh, uh, hit the um, notification button and, you know, share the video, leave a comment, do the whole thing. Cause it's a great story and check this out.